my name is Anne and today I will present to you the, the work that I did on the influence of uh, photovoltaic water pumping systems operations on groundwater sustainability. Uh, first of all, I'm going to start by uh, explaining why it's important to study this topic. Photovoltaic water pumping systems are a great way to improve water access, especially in rural off-grid areas that have uh, access to a lot of sunlight because um, this enables an easy um, and in a way effortless uh, access to water without requiring access to the electric grid. However, these pumping systems are expensive to buy and to install and so once, uh, once you invest in them you have to make sure that they will last for a long time and they will be sustainable. Now, how do we do make sure that the, the solar pump, once it's installed, will last a long time? The main risk um, is that when you pump, you're going to extract water from the borehole and the water level in the borehole will decrease as you pump. And so we want to make sure that the water level in the borehole will always remain high enough to prevent any damage to the pump and to prevent any sudden stop in the water supply. The way we do that is we create something we call a borehole model um, that will really model the response of the water level in the borehole to pumping. Um, the borehole models are created using pumping tests. So you pump, you see the effects it has on the water height in the borehole, and from that you create the model. Now because we already have models, why is that a problem for us and with solar pumps? Well basically, uh, the pumping tests that are currently being done require a constant flow rate for a certain duration. And because we have solar pumps, we can't have constant flow rates because the flow rates will, will really follow the curve of the sun. If you look at this graph, you can see the irradiance over two days. And now if you look at the second graph, over the same two days, you have the values of the pump flow rates, and they're directly proportional to the irradiance. So we can't use the, the classic pumping tests to train the borehole models. And because of that, um, the models are done and trained initially before the, the solar pump is installed, but then it's just kept that way and it's never um, recalibrated, even though the borehole might change in behavior. The question from there is, is it even possible to use solar pumping data in order to train a borehole model? The answer is yes, that was one of my first tasks. Uh, I tried different models and you, you can see here the results for one of the models. This one actually reached an accuracy of 97%. So quite accurate models to predict the water height in the borehole. Now that we know we can use solar pumping data to train a borehole model, it means that we can design a solar pumping test. Um, how would that work? Simply over a day, you would just collect the pumping data from the regular use of the pumping system. Use that data to train the borehole, and this would recalibrate regularly the model that you have. This means that you can detect early on any problem that you have with the pump or with the borehole before it's too late, meaning before it either halts completely the supply and water or before you have to do any very expensive maintenance operations. So what does this mean for Mark? Well, simply that he can install a solar pump in his community um, with the guarantee that he will be able to track the borehole's health throughout its lifetime. Now I'll leave the rest to Wesley. Thank you all for listening.